Hi guys, welcome to this new CSS Grid tutorial and today I'm going to talk to you about the um, the minmax function. It's a CSS function that you can use to better control the size of your grid items and provide minimum values and maximum values. So this is very important for responsiveness and you're going to use that a lot in your actual web designs when you want to target different viewports like on uh, mobile devices, desktops, uh, tablets, um, portrait orientation or landscape orientation. So that's when you're going to want to provide some minimum values and maximum values. So here what I have in CodePen is an HTML structure, a grid container and some items, grid items. So I have um, a background color on the container, which is a light purple color. And I've defined the grid, but I haven't set the template for the columns yet. The grid has a padding of 10 pixels, and it also had a grid gap of 10 pixels. If you do not know how uh, the grid gap works, I recommend you check my previous tutorial in this uh, grid series and uh, come back to this one when you are comfortable with the concepts. Then I also have the item class for uh, quick styling, basically uh, font color, font size, and um, not the font size, but the font family. The font size by default, I think, is 1EM. But anyway, let's jump quickly to the use of the min-max function. If you check uh, my previous videos, you realize that we use uh, strict values, like uh, 100 pixels, for instance, and 100 pixels and maybe something like this, because we wanted three columns of 100 pixels each. Or we were also using the FR units like this, one FR and two FR for instance. So we will get uh, two equally sized columns, one FR and one FR, and then the rest of the space will be twice the size of each, something like that. But today we're doing something different and we're going to use the min max function, which works like this. So it takes two parameters, the first one is the minimum value and the second one is the maximum value. So for instance, you can say I want the minimum to be 100 pixels or maybe 90 and I want the maximum to be uh, 300 pixels. So what does this do? Um, let me write this twice so that we get two columns. Okay. So this actually creates two columns with a minimum width of 90 pixels and a maximum width of 300 pixels. So here we have enough space on the viewport on the preview. So if you double check, let me right click and go to inspect elements, you're going to see that the size of uh, this column, which are actually the same because I just pasted the same min max value. These columns are 290 pixels plus five pixels of padding on each side which means 290 plus 10, 300. That is the maximum value we stated here, 300 pixels. But then if I'm to shrink this, for instance, reduce the width of this uh, element here. Uh, oops, I think I need to uh, double check like this. Here. So I'm going to close this actually here. And then I'm going to try and drag this once again. If I drag it, this doesn't move again. So let me check now. And now what we have here, I think I can still drag it some more like this. And what we have now, it's uh, right, 80 pixels, that's the main content, plus 5 pixels of padding on each side. So 5 plus 5 is 10, plus 80 is 90. And this is the minimum value that we stated here. So this really helps for responsive grid, but then you can also use percentages. So for instance, you could say um, the maximum, if there's enough space, it should take 50% of the uh, container space. And this one should take 30% if there's enough space. So now I'm going to stretch this. And you can see that the first column takes 50% of the entire grid space. So the grid, uh, the grid container is the light purple color that you see in the background here. And the grid items are the dark purple color. So this is 30% and this takes 30% of the remaining uh, 
of, of the entire grid container. But then you need to be careful when you add the values. You determine your minimum value and your maximum value. It needs to make sense because if the maximum value, for instance, is less than the minimum value, the maximum value is going to be ignored and only the minimum value is going to take effect. So for instance, if you write something like, I want it to be uh, 50 pixels minimum and maximum should be 90 pixels like this, this isn't going to make any sense at all. So let me duplicate this here. So I'm going to stretch this. There's enough space, so it's going to take 50 pixels. Uh, sorry, 50%, okay? So I'm going to inspect this element right now. And we can see that this column is already uh, 497 plus 10 because of the 5 pixel padding on each side. This is 507 pixels wide already. But this can be the minimum value because the maximum value is already 90 pixels. And 90 pixels is obviously less than 507 pixels. So in this case, the maximum value that we determine here gets cancelled out and we only have the min value. But this is not really how you want to use the min max uh, function. So you need to test that whatever you're writing actually makes sense. Okay? And you'll be better off probably writing uh, something like the pixel first and then 50% if there's enough space like this. So let me add this here. Okay? So in this case, if I'm to shrink this, I'm going to have, I think it should be 90 pixels. So here we have 80 pixels plus five on each side. That is 90, exactly what we determined. And if I stretch this all the way, you can see that each column takes half of the grid container. So that's how you want it to work. Now you might be tempted, like for instance, um, you need actually to make your code efficient. So if you check this here, I'm actually repeating myself. This is the same thing. So assuming I was to say that I want three columns and I want it to behave the same way as these two that I already have, I could paste it again. But then if you check uh, the previous tutorial, we covered the repeat function in the CSS grid. So if you do not know how to use the repeat function, I recommend you check my previous tutorial and come back to this video. But what we can do is add a repeat function here. So we're going to type repeat, open bracket here. We need to make sure that we close the brackets. And then we're going to state how many times do we want to repeat this min max 90 pixel 50% uh, value. We want to repeat, repeat, repeat this three times. So here I added three and it does the job perfectly. So if I'm to reduce this, I'm going to have 90 pixels still. That's the minimum value. So 80 plus 5 and 5, 90. And if I stretch this out, let's make this 30% uh, rather because it makes more sense. So if I stretch this out, I have 30% now. And this is kind of like a third of uh, the, the container for each column. All right. So now you might say that what if I wanted to do something like this, grid templates uh, rows, and I wanted to have min max, I want every row to be at least um, 100 pixels, and maximum it should be auto, because auto is actually a valid, um, a valid value for the, um, or a valid parameter if you want, for the min max function. So auto means like if there is enough content uh, and or there's more content than uh, can be contained in 100 pixels, then allow the row to stretch. Okay, so let me get this back to three rows like this. And you can see that only the first row gets stretched to 100 pixels, which is the minimum value that we have here. The other ones are not actually uh, specified. These are implicit rows because we only have one row defined for the grid template rows property okay like we i i showed you in the very first video i think it was the first or the second video in this tutorial series uh, how the grid template rules um, property works so here if you only have one value it's going to assume that uh, whatever you write here is only for the first row 
anything else is uh, considered like an implicit rule and the height of this rule is going to be determined by whatever padding, font size or line height that you have. So if you do this, actually it's not going to work, all right? So the trick actually is to use another property, which is grid auto rows. And in this case, it's going to apply whatever value that you have here to any row, all right? Even if you were to, for instance, generate your contents out of a database and you, didn't, you did not know how many rows that you need, you could use grid auto rows and have a min max value, a min max function, sorry, where you specify the minimum size that you want and possibly auto for the maximum based on whatever content that needs to fit the grid item. So um, here actually, you see that we only have one line of content, uh, one line of text, sample content. So we actually don't need to have 100 pixels. We could actually use this main content and we're still going to have um, a perfectly sized row here which fits this line perfectly. And then auto, which means if I was to add, for instance, uh, more text, I'm just going to copy this, paste it again multiple times. And you can see that this stretches because it needs to accommodate the, the amount of text that we have in this grid item. The rest, they, they stay um, consistent with the amount of content that they have. But then we're not going to dive deep into this in uh, this particular tutorial. But in the next video or the second next video, I'm going to show you how to use the grid auto rows property along with the min max function and the main content and the max contents along with the auto um, values. So until then, um, please subscribe to this channel. Make sure you check my previous tutorials if you're new to this uh, series. And uh, please like this video and I'll catch you next time. All right. Bye.